everybody, Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I've got this really lovely pop-up card to show with you. I've been playing around with just some really simple pop-up mechanisms and I've come up with this and I think it looks lovely. So on the front, I've got this very simple and it's white and red throughout. So I've gone really kind of bold, quite striking with this card. So you see there, I've just layered up lots of hearts. I've kind of been doing this a lot through this series. So I'm kind of going through a bit of a, a it's kind of the thing I like to do at the minute. Um, but I think it looks lovely, a little bit of um, glitter there. And I've got some sequins and glossy accents and, um, and lots of dimension. There's lots of foam pads with that one there. And then when you open it up, you have these two pop-up pieces inside. So basically the whole thing is lifted on both sides because usually with a lot of pop-ups you just have something maybe on the base so it would be like this and it would all open up from here um, but I quite liked the thought of having you know on both sides here and you can see again it's one of these ones when you put it in person you can see there just how much is going on it's really really good I love it I love just again just sticking with those two simple colors I think it looks really really you know great I think it just really pops so, and then on the back, you've got room there to write your message. Now, if you wanted to, you could have a box there or depending on how you lay everything out, you know, you can easily, you know, write your message on the inside as well. But I do like that it can be displayed like this and they can just see just a really nice feature there in the middle. And of course, although this is Valentine's themed, you could easily have, you know, anything on this. This could be filled with balloons or presents for like a birthday. You might have some really nice bride and groom stamps that you might want to have here for a wedding card. Um, get well soon, you might want to have lots of flowers kind of popping out of it. So there's lots of ways to, you know, change this for, a, you know, certainly a different theme. So nice and straightforward, not too difficult to do. So let's crack on. Okay, so the stamps I've used, there's lots of kind of older ones here because again, obviously Valentine's just once a year, so I don't tend to have a lot of Valentine's stamps, but I've got Crafty Impressions Forever Yours, where I've used the Forever Yours on the uh, the front, which you'll see in a minute. This one here, last time I shared this, I, I the person wrote down where it was from, but I forgot to add it onto my little label here. So if anybody's got this one, please let me know. It's a really nice one. You have the definition of love, which is what I've used in both of the cards. Then you've got forever and always. Together is a beautiful place to be. And I've done this on a, a really nice um, project that I've done a while ago. And I've, yeah, it's just lovely. I love the font. And then this one here, I use the envelope which you can see on the front and I used it inside as well. Just stamped it, no colouring, I just coloured the heart in the middle but that was from an old uh, hobby base. This was by Crafty Panda and it's called Sweet Valentines. Again, things like this you might still find on eBay. You know, lots of people on the Facebook craft kind of selling sites, people sell these kind of things, you may pick them up. Then I have used, now I didn't use that, I was gonna use it. I'll show you what it does actually because it's really nice but I did, I'm gonna probably put this on another project but they're Scrabble pieces, and I done the word love. So L-O-V-E, you can see there. So you got your square, and then you got all your different um, letters of the alphabet there with the numbers, of the totals in a game of Scrabble. So yeah, I did do them. Um, they were gonna go on the back, but then I thought, no, it doesn't look right. So you might see them feature. Um, but if you did like that one, it's an old first edition one, and it is called Alphabet Tile Dies, okay? And then back to what I have used is this one here. So it's the heart band. I haven't actually used this one, I don't think, at all. I've used the flower band, the butterfly band, but I've not used the heart band. So I haven't used the band section, but I've used all of the geometric hearts and I just thought it looked really nice, keeping that theme and the shape of them throughout. You can see I've got them there all kind of cascading and um, yeah, really pleased with that one. So I've gone ahead and got all the pieces I need. So that's for the back panel. That's the main card. That's our pop-out piece, and I've done the front, okay? So I've used Nuvo Drops, and I've just gone for pinks with this one here. And everything is layered up on foam pads, okay? So just to give it that dimension, even these, I mean, if you are posting it, um, I know, you know, different parts of the world, they're, they're quite funny with the bulky cards. But anyway, if you do, you know, then you may not want to put it on as much foam as I have, but I have gone ahead and done that, and I'll give the dimensions later. And then there's all of my decoration which I will show you how to do in a moment. So just a little bit of scoring and cutting. So I'm using a five by seven pre-made card base, you know, card blank. So if you don't have that, you want a piece of card that's 10 by seven and along the 10 inch side, just score at five right down through the middle and that will create your card blank, okay? For the pop-up piece in the middle, this is a piece of nine and a half by six and a half. 
Now if you want to you could do it so it's nine and three quarters by six and three quarters but I've done it so I have quite a large white border because I then rather than doing another matte layer I have just done some faux stitching with a red pen, fine liner pen. Okay, so if you want to fill that gap, because you might think that's too much of a white gap, then do what I've done. Otherwise, increase this piece or do a separate mat behind here. It's entirely up to you. Okay, so first of all, we just need to... So with this one, you want to score first through the middle, which is at four and three quarters. Okay, so right down there through the centre. And then I will get rid of the scoreboard. And if you've got a T-square ruler, that will come in quite handy now. Otherwise, you'll just have to mark with a pencil at the top and the bottom. But if you've got a T-square ruler, then you can just, you know, go straight down. First of all, with a normal ruler, just along the top here, coming out from this middle score line, first of all, with your ruler, I'm just lining mine up along the top here, just put a pencil mark at half an inch and at two and a quarter. And then do the same on the other side. So here's the score line again. So you will just mark, you probably want to turn your ruler upside down actually, and again do half an inch and two and a quarter. Make sure mine's lined up there. And then with your T ruler, T square ruler, you can then go from that marker, because you know it's nice and straight, and just draw a pencil line all the way down. If you don't have a T square ruler, I would highly recommend that you mark those same marks at the bottom along here. So again, half an inch two and a quarter, half an inch, two and a quarter, and then join them up because even if you think you're straight, you may just be just slightly off like that or something and then before you know it, all your lines are wrong. So you should have these four pencil lines. Try and do it quite lightly so you can rub them out. Alternatively, you could flip it over, but then in a minute, this next bit, well, you'll see anyway, but. Okay, and then along the middle score line, you wanna come down one and a quarter and one and three quarters. So you've got a half inch section. I'm just marking a little pencil mark. And then at four and a quarter and four and three quarters. Again, so you've got a little half inch um, section there. This one ends up coming up at one and three quarters, whereas we came down from the top at one and a quarter. The reason I've done them slightly different is because of the size of the hearts I've used. Okay, so this is quite a big heart. So I came down, actually, that's at the bottom. Yeah, that was right. Yeah. I'm just thinking then what I've, why I've done that, but it was, yeah, because that came up higher, that was it. Uh, to be honest, it probably wouldn't have mattered. This was this actually started off, this piece underneath, started off being my template and um, just like a prototype, but it, I was really pleased with how it came together, so I didn't have to chuck any of it. But anyway, that's the measurements I've done. Once you see what I'm doing, you could do them both the same if you wanted to, i.e. this one comes up and this one comes down the same. Next, you wanna come, again, I'm gonna use my T-square ruler it keeps everything straight so I'm just going to line it up there and you want to draw a pencil line from this one across to there and this one across to there okay so there's where we've done the two markers that are half an inch apart but you're starting them from that pencil line which is one which is half an inch from the left across this one and to this side this one you're gonna do it the opposite, which is why we need all four score lines. So this time, again, I'm just lining up my ruler. And this time we're gonna draw our pencil from here, cross just to that one. And then I'm just gonna come up and do the same. I'll take a photo of this and I'll pop it on my blog. But that's what you want. So it's just the same, but just, you know, each one's flipped. So you've got your middle score line, and then you've got half an inch on one side and then all on the other. And again, that middle score line, half an inch on one side and then everything else on the other. Okay, so that's just all you need to do in terms of your pencil marks. Then we want to do a little bit of scoring and a little bit of cutting. Okay, so it's up to you whether you score or cut first, but you want to now cut down all of these lines here, okay? So starting from that end, nice and straight, push it into your metal ruler. Make sure you've got a surface underneath that can handle a cutting knife. So I've got my self-healing mat. And then again, I'm gonna to come to this one here. So you'll see now I've cut through this one and this one. Okay. Then you just wanna add some score lines to these little half inch sections in between where you've just cut. 
So you're just scoring just in between the two cut lines. You're just joining them up really. I've just realised you've got another score line and totally forgot it. And I forgot it when I was doing my prototype. It's fine, we can still add it in right away. Because actually it's just going to become a score line. But what you want to also do is add a, another. So you want to do a half an inch here and half an inch here. So between these pencil lines I've come in half an inch and at four. Okay. And then again you just want to draw a pencil line. From the top all the way down. I'm do, well. You don't have to do the. I'm doing the pencil lines to to teach you really on you know what I'm doing. But certainly when you're doing this yourself, you could just do this as a score line because all you're going to end up doing is just scoring. Um, in a second, like so. So now all you're going to do is just score within this piece that we've cut, where that pencil line goes over it. So. Again, the template, I'll have it all colour coded. So where's your score lines and cut lines and so on. But just so you can see. Okay, so that's going to come up like that. And that one's going to come up like that. You see how they pop out? Now this bit's going to bend a bit here. It's just easy for you to score right through because what I found is that where I cut this down, if you just cut yourself um, a thin strip, so just cut a half inch strip by, um, where's my ruler gone? Half inch by two and a quarter. So two and a quarter. And then just do half and half. And then you can just reinforce it. Okay, but that's what you will have. So there it is flat, bring it up so that that folds up and that folds up like this. And then the whole thing will fold flat when you pop them through. Like I said, because it's got the other fold, it may want to just kind of do its own thing. But once we get it into place and we stick these little reinforcements on, otherwise you don't want to score this to start with. Do the pencil lines where I've said, and then when you score through the center, you want to miss this piece. So just score, miss this piece, score, miss this piece and score. That way you won't get that fold there. But Again, I was just trying to maybe like little cheat ways, lazy ways to just make the cards and then you can just stick this on. I mean, it's always good to reinforce something where you can. And if you are going to put quite a few things on here, like I have, then I have, I have, then just sticking that over the top. Again, using the trusty Kalau glue, it will become, well, you know, those of you that use it, it just becomes so strong. So yeah, it's up to you. You can do it and score that middle score line last or you can do this before, but I'm going to just stick that on there and then I'm going to rub out all the pencil lines. Again, if you don't want to rub out all the pencil lines, you could flip this over, push them out this way. Um, you'll just have one, well, if you could do it that way, yeah, you're, you're going to have them on opposite sides, but it would still work. So yeah, again, it's up to you, you know, play around with it, but um, those pencil lines would be easy to rub out. Okay, so that's my card all ready. So now you want to start sticking everything down. So I like to stick this piece into my card blank and then start building everything up because I just find I can just see, you know, how everything's going to look a bit better. So you see now when I stick that in, there's quite a big white border. So you might want to do a bigger mat underneath. So I'm going to do one side at a time and um, just pop my glue all on the back and all around the pop-out pieces. And then I'm going to hover it over until I get that fold meeting the fold of the card. And then you can just kind of keep it at a right angle because that's how the card will stay open and push and butt that right up. So those score lines sit really nicely together. And then you can just fold it flat and then add your glue onto the other side. And then push up the other side. You can fold it all flat in a minute, but I always find it good to keep it when you, whenever you're working with a pop-up card, keep your right, you know, it at a right, keep it at a right angle, like so, because the card is obviously gonna 
be closed because that's how you're going to deliver it but when the person opens it they're only ever going to open it like this they never you never get cards if, well I guess if they're flat cards they've got nothing on them but someone isn't going to get that I mean they can but it starts to stay in that shape I can't if I pull that really flat it will start to tear whereas it it naturally will stay in that shape so it folds nice and flat but it will only really open maybe three quarters of the way so and that's what you kind of want all right so again just make sure that that score line runs so you don't get a gap you would if you've got a gap there then you need to push it in you know a bit more like so okay so once you're happy with that I've got a little bit of glue there it's just come out just wipe that away then we can start adding everything so like I said you can put anything you want but a few little tips I just want to go through with you whatever you're adding in is your pop out piece because you've got that half inch piece when you go to close it whatever's on these will move out half an inch so you'll see as I close this this edge of this heart starts to come and it just overlaps the red but it doesn't come out the side of the card so whatever you put on there maybe just um, get, get a piece of like washi tape something that's got a real low tack and just tack it in place and go and close your card and check that when you close it none of your pop, in, you know, pop out pieces are popping out the sides because you're going to struggle getting it in your envelope and I just don't think it looks as good you want to make sure everything's enclosed inside and that's the same for that side as well both pieces will move by whatever height you've got your pop out piece so mine's only got a half inch height to it so I don't have to worry too too much so I want to follow that same pattern so I've got this one here which is going to stick on this one now I don't go right up to that one because if you look here I've layered up another one which actually covers that tiny little piece of the pop-up piece so although that one will be stuck like that I will then bring in this one here which will go like that okay and again that will be stuck on foam as well so it's going to have a lot of dimension so all I want to do first of all is just add some glue just kind of there really and then I'm going to have that one like so so I've got it there but then when it goes to close as it slides I can just push it in a bit because that glue I've got a bit of wiggle space and then just push that down but I can see there just move it a little bit there we go so you've got lots of you know use your liquid glues so it gives you that wiggle room you might not be happy with it when you place it down you've got time to take it off again but now when I open that in fact I can see a little bit of it there so I am going to just go like so push it that way that's better there I'm happy with that and then with this one here it's got some foam so I want to have it just right up in the corner there and then that one is going to make sure the foam dot is completely covered on that section because you don't want any of your adhesive interfere, you know, don't want it overhanging, otherwise it's going to interfere with the closure. If you can feel anything sticky, put your fingers under here and just rub them underneath. If you can feel anything sticky, I always get my anti-static powder, rub my you know fingers with it and just or a paintbrush and just go in there and brush it over and it will get rid of any of that kind of um, stickiness. But now I've got that one already starting to pop. Looks really cool. Then I've got another one. I'm just going to cut a little bit. I've already got a little bit there from another one. So that one can go oh, just on the edge of that one. And then that one's going to stick like so. And this will stay lifted once that collage dry because it's, you know, there is a bit of weight there, but it does, once that's all dry. And again, just keep closing it every time. You can see there, love it, love this pink. That's that pink that I brought from that shop in Tavistock last week, I think it was. So then that one there is gonna stick on this one. So again, I'm just gonna pop a little bit of glue on the edge. And then this one I wanna have like so. Then I'm gonna add a foam little pad there and have that one. I want it to cover most of that piece like so. Again just pop your finger underneath make sure none of that glue's oozing out but now you can see 
again how it looks. Then I have one of these little envelopes, love these, and I've got one just there. And then I've got another one, because I've already put the pads on this, because I knew where I was going to have them. And that one's going to go just under that one, like so. So that's everything on the pop-up piece. Then I've got my little love um, quote, um, no, the meaning, sorry, of love. And then this one is going to go about there again, make sure everything's nice and straight. I've got to put my faux stitching in yet. And then I've got these hearts, so I'm going to pop one right down here. And I've got that to go over the top. I did have another one cut out, but I seem to have misplaced that one. And then I've got this one, which is going to go down here. I've got a smaller one, which is going to go at the top. So you might have lots of different hearts throughout lots of different collections, because I know I have, but I just thought, well, I haven't used this one, and I love all of those styles. But, you you know, this one isn't from the collection, this tiny little one here. Um, where do I want to put that one? Did I have that on the front? No, I must have had it in here. Um, well, I can have that one just with a little bit of glue. I think I've dropped one on the floor, actually, because I definitely remember cutting two. That one I'm just going to have there. Okay, so you can see what I've done there. I'm just going to close it up, and then I've got my front cover. So the larger mat is four and three quarters by six and three quarters. Then the white one is four and a half by six and a half. And then the pink one is four and a quarter by six and a quarter. And that's the same for them. I just don't have that final one on top. So I'm just going to add some glue onto this one and stick it on the front. And I'm going to stick that other one down on the back. Okay, so I'm just grabbing a fine liner. Um, I want something that's going to be quite a close match. That pink's a little bit dark. These are the Arteza fine liners. Um, oh, that, that one's not bad. That one, maybe that one might be a bit better. Hmm, I think that one actually. You do get quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, I think that one's going to be better. Let's just try that one there. No, I think that's a bit too light. I'm going to go for this one here. I'm just going to go around and um, just quickly do some faux stitching. Okay, so that's the stitching done. I've just stuck that on that side because it came off and I thought actually no, I'll stick it on that side. I think it needs a little bit more purely because on this one I had these red heart sequin embellishments but I don't have them in pink so I think what I'm going to probably do is add some Nuvo drops the same ones that I've got on the front here which I love which was the I use these two actually I use the um, sherbet shimmer and party pink so one of them's got a bit of a glitter to them and then that one's just your matte so I think I might have a few of those just kind of running through across from corner up to that corner there, similar to like that, I think will look nice, but I need to, you know, make sure um, I give that time to dry. But no, I'm gonna do it now, because I might as well, <laughs> I won't do it. I'm gonna just stick with one color for the minute, but I'll just put this on high speed. In fact, I can't, I'm gonna to have to do one half and then another, but you can see what I'm doing, because I can only really do this one side because it will, it can't stand up um, obviously um, straight because the Nuvo drops will just dip otherwise and uh, will drip should I say, pop a couple in there but you can see there just just want to keep them kind of hugging the hearts because then that, I'll try and get some more in there in a minute but I do think it does add just that little bit more to it, just gives something in the background there but I love it, I absolutely adore these. I think they're so sweet and I think they will work perfectly for many, many occasions. So I'm not gonna close that up now. You can just see I stuck the back down there. So I'm gonna just pop that to one side and show you again this one. And I think I'm gonna add some more Nouveau drops because I really do like that. And I've for this one I used the um, clear uh, crystal one, sorry, what were they called? Um, White Blizzard, I think it is. Yeah, white blizzard. So I'll probably add a few more of those, but you'll see that in the photos. So I'm gonna do that all now and then that'll dry before I take the pictures. But yeah, there you have it. So I'm gonna finish the tutorial there. 
two really beautiful, very pretty Valentine's cards and um, I love them. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Like I said, I'll share all the links to what I've used, the measurements and everything will be in my blog and I'll take a photo, I'll do a template as well and I'll put a photo in the blog as well. All right, so thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed today and I'll be back again soon with another tutorial. Bye.